Welcome to a new edition of the Famous Interviews with Joe Domino, keynote speaker, executive coach, diversity communication trainer, musician, radio host, and journalist, David Rigby. David and his team developed a training practice focusing on preference profiling, vertical development, wellness, psychological safety, diversity inclusion, and diversity inclusion. He is based in Spain and the UK. He established the UAE office and team. For universities, he coached in career, life, and presentation skills. He uses his communication skills as a UK radio presenter and producer and has written over 40 articles for his lifestyle column. He has more than 25 years' experience on customers facing business change and digital transformation projects, either as a project manager, business analyst, or leading programs working with consultancies. He is a great professional. Enjoy this interview. Let's go then. Okay, cool. Well, hey, thank you for taking a minute out, and I want to start off everything here with COVID. You know, how did you survive that last two years we've lived through, and how has it subsequently changed the way that you live your life and approach business now? Well, I had a great COVID lockdown. I had two lodgers, one now in Spain, I had one lodger from Argentina and the other from Antigua. So it was very entertaining being locked down with those two. Yeah. And, and also, in a, I'm both about 30, and it enabled me to redesign my business and website and everything else. So it was very useful for me having lockdown because I didn't have to go anywhere. I could do everything from home. So you're an international keynote speaker, trainer, consultant, and executive coach, but I want to kind of boil this down a little bit for everybody out there, and I'm going to put you in front of a bunch of third graders at a career day. One of the kids looks up and says, what do you do for a living? How do you answer that child? Well, what I do for a living now is I place other people in contracts to do training and coaching and speaking, but I also do training myself locally and I do a lot over the internet because most of our clients are in the Middle East where I don't want to go to. Um, I'm also developing my speaking skills with the Professional Speakers Association in Spain where I did a presentation last November and I'm looking forward to all being well doing the TEDx speech in Malaga in about June. So, what did you want to be when you were a kid? When you were in grade school, what was your dream to grow up and become? Well, I'll tell you, my, my career, a career officer at school said you would not, I would make a very good gas fitter. Which is connecting gas pipes together. Yeah. Uh, I got a degree in mathematics, I started in programming, and I gradually shifted away from technology and more people. It's taken a long, long time to do it, but I've done it. So are you happy with how everything's turned out and, and where your career is now? Absolutely. It's taken me, I've done more shifting and learning in the last 10 years than ever before. I have worked in 22 different countries. And I'm at an age where I ought to be retired, but I, I like doing the work, so I'm doing it. You know, the one thing that a lot of people don't get the chance to do is to travel as much as you have. And I'm curious... How has all of this traveling and seeing different cultures lent to your effectiveness or your empathy or your ability to see the world in a very unique way that you do? I think the key thing to do is to listen and observe first before you say too much. But certainly interculturality, which I teach people in, is about how to be able to deal with many different cultures at the same time. And that is a skill. And but people got dragged into all this when the world of COVID and Zoom meetings took place. And suddenly you're faced with all these people from different cultures at the same time. And you have to learn how to behave within it. You know, the one thing about your list of things that you do is that you've done a lot of things, you do a lot of things. But what is it out of all of them, you know, whether it's speaking or training, being on the radio, being a coach, what is it, is there any of them that 
you look forward to more than the other, or is it all kind of the same? Do you love all your children the same? Well, what I particularly spent a lot of time last year doing was going out and meeting people face to face. So I went all over Spain and Portugal, and I guess that was my best satisfaction, and certainly at the Professional Speakers Association first meeting in four years when I presented, actually being part of that group was a great, great triumph for me. The other thing I do in my spare time is I play the piano and I learn to sing. I always thought I couldn't do it. And so I now teach one of my friends of mine from Tina how to sing in English. I go and sing with him in restaurants and bars. And recently we have a learning club and we help each other learn different things. And one of my great satisfactory things was I learned to sing a really difficult song in Spanish. So those are the things I get the both from is the people side, going meeting people, spending time with people. Every day I could spend forever on the laptop and I don't. I always go out. I always get some air, I always go and see people, even locally to me. So um, that's what I do. So, you know, the one thing that always lifts us up in life for the people that we look up to and admire, who's been a role model or a hero for you in your life? Um, one of the key ones is a woman called Sally Ann de la Casta, who comes from Trinidad and Tobago, who I met in 2015, and I last spoke to yesterday. And she runs a company called Gleek from Dubai, and in effect... Probably half of my associates have come from her. And what her passion was, was teaching leadership to nine-year-olds. And she has such a wonderful way of networking and including everybody. That's just, that's, that's, my, that's my, main, my main role model. And I also, I work with quite a few of them. But with that great, I, I spend the time with people I want to be with, which is, which is what, how I operate. So if you could meet anybody alive on the planet right now, who would you love to meet and talk to? I like that. That's true. It's true. I mean, you know, new person on the block, new kid on the block, catches you on guard, like, do you need to be now? And, well, of course I can, because of all the training I've had. I learned such a lot in the last 10 years. I think I, in 2010 or thereabouts, I did a year's worth of consulting in the desert outside Abu Dhabi about customer service. And we used to present all the results with Arabic slides they can't read, and things used to happen. And I couldn't be fast enough. So I learned to, to, I decided to study spontaneity. And for that, I took singing lessons. I learned to sing in a band. I did lots of PowerPoint presentations where I had seen the slides. And I got invited on the radio and loved it, so I learned how to be spontaneous on radio. And then beyond that, over in Dubai, I learned, I did a training course on stand-up comedy, which means I can uh, present without any, any material whatsoever and almost nothing. And then last year, with one of my wonderful associates, Jessica Breitenfeld, I attended the course she ran on clowning which is about being how to be confident about doing really stupid things in front of a lot of people. All of those things have been, for me, the things I've learned most from in the last few years. Clearly, because I've been writing stuff, and I teach technical stuff, you have to know about it. But the most important stuff I've learned is how to present. Every day you wake up, you have things that you look forward to doing. What is it that drives and motivates you to do your work and, and to go through the day? Uh, I just find it so interesting. I mean, one of the things, I don't watch TV, but I listen to possibly three or four hours of BBC Radio 4 podcasts every year, every day, and I learn stuff. So for me, it's always about learning new things. I have an infinite list of things to do, but they get done when I choose to have the time to do them. 
because I like doing them. And what gets me up every day is actually the people I have the conversation with and the people I meet. What is it at the end of the day when you lean back and look at your day? How do you quantify a good day for you? What is a good day? Well, I'll tell you what was a very good day last week. Um, last Friday, I met two new people in my little tiny village called Alte, which is by the sea in Spain. One of them was someone who does couch surfing, which I do, so a couch surfing host. And I spent four hours talking to him. And before that, I went to a meditation group run by a woman from Sweden called Eva. And she, her husband's got multiple sclerosis and they have an assistant who's a guy from Cuba who I met for the first time. I met him three times on that day. And the third time was at my local bar when he organized um, bachata and salsa dancing in the street at 1.30 in the morning. And that, for me, was like sitting in the middle of West Side Story, and that was fabulous. That's cool. So, you know, you've had such a varied and interesting existence. I'm curious if you have a dream tonight and you run into the younger version of yourself, say in your 20s, and you could give that version of you a piece of advice based on the wisdom and the paths that you've been down in life. What would you tell your young version? I would tell my young version very simply this. Learn to take a lot more risks than you did and learn to be very confident about doing them. What's been... I take more risks than I ever have. Yeah, yeah. What's been one of the best compliments you've ever gotten for the work that you've done? One of the best fan letters you've ever received? It's about energy and the motivation to make other people, uh, other people to be able to, be, to improve themselves. So... And it's also, I mean, it's also, it's also being, giving people a lot of help and also being able to ask for it. A lot of people think asking for help is a weakness, but in fact it's really a strength to be confident enough to say, you don't know, help me with this. So, David, everyone out there has an idea or a perception of you, your family, your friends, you know, clients, those that you meet and talk to, but you ultimately live your life. What's your perception of you? Who do you think you are? I sort of am the world of your set in many ways. I think I'm, I'm a... A person who can be very quiet. I used to be very introverted and I've learned not to be. Um, I'm reasonably educated. I'm much more, I like to take the risk, take the punch, see what happens, play life as a game. That's how I do it. Otherwise, the risks I take, well, many people will be, will be scared to death and I just get on with it. Wonderful. David, if anyone out there wants to learn more about you, any of your services, anything related to your world, where on the web is the best place for them to go? They should look at my website, which is www.smartcoachingtraining.com, and the email is davidr at smartcoachingtraining.com. Wonderful. David, I love your nomadic spirit, your open heart. Thank you for giving me time today to talk about your story. Good luck with everything. I appreciate it. And that sent me sounds good. Thank you. Thanks for tuning in to another famous interview with Joe Domino, where we cover the world of art, literature, business, spirituality, music, and more from around the globe. If you want to hear more interviews, visit the Famous Interviews with Joe Domino channel on YouTube. You can also find us on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. Thanks again for listening, and until next time. Mm-hmm.